So uh, this would be rather a uh, humble talk, simple, nothing like too theoretical. A story uh, and sometimes a cautionary tale about one company and few software engineers trying to put a large language model into production. So uh, the trouble with speaking about AI on the conferences like this is that you uh, sent your abstract in March and you speak in July and in the middle like of the things happen. So it's just uh, to give you some uh, hint like what happened just past month or two is we now have generative link in Photoshop. If you recognize, those are like the very famous memes and the Photoshop just draw everything around that. At least for me, it looks very realistic. We have roughly the same now in the mid journey. So if you now generate the image in the mid journey, you can basically zoom out and mid journey is, uh, is like drawing what it found to be a realistic around that image. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, um, just yesterday, I have found that somebody made uh, the ba Barbie Girl song with the voice of the Johnny Cash and uh, voice uh, cloning and the lip syncing is going really hard. Something that used to be uh, just for expert is now uh, taking over and there are like the free tools that anybody can use. And also we now have the lawyer that have been uh, fined uh, 5,000 bucks for using ChatGPT. So his client was suing airlines and he basically just asked ChatGPT to do the filling. And the problem was, like, it looks like really good. Unfortunately, all of the cases that were cited were hallucinated and were not real. He was not stupid. He asked, like, whether those cases are real or not. Unfortunately, he asked ChatGPT. So ChatGPT said, yes, they're, they're real. So I am slightly worried that we will get, like, more stories like that in the very, very near future. Uh, this is some like small thing. So we now have uh, more open models. The Llama 2 pub is publicly available two days ago, as you have, might have seen on the lighting talks yesterday. We have a uh, code interpreter that, in my opinion, will be the big thing. We have more ChatGPT competitors like the Claude 2. Bart is finally available in Europe and for like small languages. And you know, uh, new companies are starting based on the ChatGPT. So who I am? My name is Peter and I have two jobs. I am the researcher uh, at the Masaryk University doing large language models for uh, proteins and DNA. You might have uh, seen uh, the talk yesterday by Eva Klementova, that is the same group as I am. And I am also doing uh, large language models for uh, media monitoring. So. Uh, Monitora Media is a company based here in Prague. We collect everything that uh, appears in Czech and Slovak Republic in print, online, major TV shows, major radio shows, and now even the podcast. And we usually, have, we usually have quite good relationships with our media sources because our clients are typically some PR agency or for the large company, some PR department. So those are the people that are paying for the advertisement in the media. So media is usually quite happy that we made it like simple for them to evaluate the campaign they are paying for. Um, and I've joined, I've started to collaborate with this company in November. For some of you might know what else happened in the end of the November. ChatGPT appeared. So, uh, from the beginning, it was like uh, something we have been like playing with. And before I will go, I will like uh, tune my talk to uh, like how many people here like use ChatGPT almost daily, almost every working day. Interesting. How many of you use it for coding? Okay, a lot of the people. How many of you have access to ChatGPT Plus? So this is the paid version. Less people. Uh, how many of you have ever used the API? So basically the Python. 
okay, a lot of the people, more than I would like guess. How many of you is using Bart or Claude, the competitors of the GPT? Interesting, not so many people, so I might talk a bit about like what is the reason to use them. Uh, and if, like, if this would be a small room, I would ask like, if you can share some creative use or any hiccups. For example, I'm using ChatGPT for cooking almost every week. Uh, and, and the hiccups is something like the, the uh, problems is something that I found important because we don't want to be this lawyer that use the chat GPT the wrong time. So it's important to like understand what are like the strong points and the weak points of the chat GPT. My favorite weak point is this one. If you ask the chat GPT and even the chat GPT plus, Great Britain versus Madagascar, which is bigger, he felt that uh, uh, Great Britain is significantly larger than Madagascar, which would be probably even my tip. But then, because he's smart, he knows that to make it more convincing, he should cite the, uh, the area of one and two, and then he realized, oh, but Madagascar is bigger. And now, if that would be the person, he would edit the beginning of the sentence. But as some of you might know, uh, this is generated sequentially, so she couldn't edit the beginning of the first sentence. So he rather like put there this extra sentence on, on the end. It's not in every generated text, but every generated text I have ever seen always saying that Great Britain is, is larger than Madagascar. So this is just like one of the things. Quite often people are coming to me with like other errors. Many people think that they are testing like the encyclopedia knowledge, like, uh, oh, ChatGP, do, do you know what is? And then put some like Wikipedia type of the word. I don't think this is like good use for ChatGPT. And also like many people are uh, coming to me with the problems, like you can make even a simple math question that ChatGPT failed, but only the free version, only the three and a half. Like when my friends are <coughs> coming to me, my most often answer is, have you tried the ChatGPT plus? They said no, and like <coughs> I would say in 90 cases, the ChatGPT Plus will not do the mistake they're asking about. So first take home message is, if you use ChatGPT a lot, if you are one of those people who was like using it for the coding and using it almost daily, like you probably want to pay 20 bucks per month to get much better tool. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we have, uh, other AI uses in Monitor app, even before I joined, like one of them is the news aggregation. So we are trying to find the, the, new, the articles on the similar topics. Uh, but when I joined, what uh, somebody suggested that would be a nice thing is that sometimes when you are, you know, searching for some words like the AI, you get like the long list of the articles about that. Sorry, this is in check. Uh, so how can you get through all this article? Like you can read just the title, you can read those one few lines from the beginning, or, uh, but it would be really nice if you would get, you know, summary, just a few sentences on the beginning. And that's what we have used large language models for. Uh, now, and this has uh, appeared in the production on, I believe, March the 2nd, or March the 3rd, something like that. So, from the technical point of view, uh, it's six, seven lines of Python. It's nothing really complicated. You just call OpenAI, you need to have the key generated on their web page, you, uh, yeah, you basically get the output of this, and you select the model. Currently, we, <coughs> we are using ChatGPT. Uh, but when we have started, uh, we start with the curry. Why we started with the curry and not like the larger model like the Da Vinci was purely for like the financial reason. We needed to make it on a reasonable budget. This was too expensive. Also, we didn't uh, summarize all of the paper, uh, all of the articles. We just summarized 
the one that somebody opened. So we did it on the fly. And why we didn't use ChatGPT API? Because on March the 2nd, it was not yet available. And this happened on the first day. Actually, it happened before I was able to, to get to the office. So it was not the good start of the day. Uh, my problem was when I was testing that, I was using like the real newspapers. But we are, for some of our clients, uh, putting into database anything what they want. So for example, this is some small city in southern Bohemia. And uh, this is from their web page. This is the screenshot on the left. And this is like the text translated to English on the right. And it was just, you know, they met. Uh, the, the city council met. They, uh, I, yeah. And then there is the PDF, what they were really talking about. And the summary was like on extraordinary meeting, the, the city council. And then they feel they should like put something there, but there was no information. There is no information here. So they put her, oh, they dismissed the mayor. And because the name of the mayor was like somewhere there, they put her the name. And like uh, when this small city like saw that, they were like really not like very happy to say it very politely. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what was the problem? The problem was that this text was too short to be summarized. So it was easily to be solved. We just like change the minimal length to be summarization because if you see something like that, you don't want to summarize it anyway. It will like not add more information. Uh, also, we were happy that something like two or three days after we start to run this into the production, ChatGPT API appeared, we did a test, it worked like so much better for the same price. So it was like good, good coincidence for us. Other thing is, uh, may I ask how many people here doesn't have English as their uh, primary language? So, okay, almost everybody. Uh, could you somehow put uh, the hand on how much is ChatGPT working for your language? Like this would be the English, this would be not at all. So for the Czech, it's roughly here. It's not as good as the English. It can't do the rhymes. It, it can't sometimes get uh, the, the tone correctly, but most often it's, it's okay. And like many people thought that the ChatGPT is working for Czech. And uh, one of the things that if you are using ChatGPT for, for other language of, uh, than in the English, that will always be the problem, is the tokenization. Because tokenization have been done on the primarily, so the tokenization is splitting the text into the, into the small parts and then the numbering those small parts. And because it has been done on uh, primarily the English, you can see that the English is almost like each word is one token. Well, if you take some other languages, you can see that it's more like one character is one token. So the rule of the thumb for English is something like four characters is one token on average. So when I've started to make my back of the envelope calculation based on this and use check text instead, I was very wrong because for Czech, it's more like two characters. So because you usually pay per token, you are paying twice as much. Also, you can only, uh, because there's some token limit, how large text you can like send to one of those. That means that you can send only half of the length that would be for English. So keep that in mind if you like, because still, most of the discussion about those models are uh, among the English-speaking people. So keep in mind, if you will then do it, uh, that it would be like better for, uh, better, worse for your language. Second is, you rely on OpenAI ChatGPT servers. Uh, and uh, what happened to us is that when the servers are, are slow, we need the summary, as I've said, it's calculated on the fly, it's of course like uh, 
uh, saved and then used repeatedly, but for the first reader of the article, it's calculated on the fly. And when we started, it was like five, six seconds to get a summary. And then after a month, it was 10, and then it starts to growing. It's not really practical to get the summary after 20 seconds because in 20 seconds you probably can read half of the text anyway. So, so this is like, we were like really scared because we, our uh, Django app start timeouting those things and you know, really like not very nice kind of the problems that you want to have on the Friday afternoon. Uh, and so, so this is something, again, keep in mind that, that uh, you observe OpenAI server in like one state, but it can change and it will change. Now it's like really good because they probably bought more GPU cards. Uh, and last thing that I didn't get in testing, but I know that I'm not the only one person because I have heard it from other people, in the rare cases for Czech it's one than person, but for Slovak, for example, it's more. Summarization language is wrong. So we are putting there like the Czech text and we are getting English summary. So it's typically like from other language to English. So it's very easy to get the turnaround to just uh, test the language of the output. It's nothing complicated, but it's just that you need to care about that. Okay, so this is ChatGPT alternatives. We are still using ChatGPT 3.5. There is now new version from uh, the end of June. ChatGPT 4 is awesome, much better as I have said, but the problem is it's also much more expensive. Uh, Claude, now there is the new version, Claude 2, is awesome, but for summarization, I don't know like why it's, uh, it's not giving me. So for my personal use, I'm using Claude 2 all the time, but for summarization, I'm not getting such a good results from the API. There is no BART, like this is very recent. Uh, when I was last time tested the API, it still didn't accept it check request, so it tests the language as well and said it will not talk to you, and it's Bing chat. And each of those tools is like special for something. Like I, I would say that each of them has its own use case. So the chat GPT is cheap and easy. Chat GPT is having now the code interpreter, which is awesome thing. You put the Excel file, you ask which graph do you want, and you will get the graph. It's, uh, or statistical analysis. If you do the biostatistician as me as the training, it feels like really strange because this used to be like a large part of my job and then the chat GPT is doing it maybe better than I used to do. Uh, Claude 2 is awesome because you could input like a hundred thousand tokens so you basically can copy the book into it and you now can do it even like the multiple PDFs and then asking the questions about what is inside. And the BART is having like another super uh, superpower, like most of those models have been trained and the training set is basically fixed somewhere in the past. Like for the ChatGPT, it's, it's the September uh, 2021, so all your data and information is basically two years old, but the BART is, is trained continuously. So if you ask the ChatGPT who is the Czech president, you will get the wrong answer, while for the BART you will get the right answer. Okay, uh, from the beginning, my colleagues pushed me like, okay, this is the OpenAI model, but we want our own large language model. So we have started with the Lamas and Friends. Uh, so Lama uh, was released by Meta in February 23. Uh, it's based, it's basically application of something that has been done by the DeepMind in the Chinchilla paper, the optimal ratio between, uh, between training, and, uh, uh, training and the number of the parameters. Uh, it was less than 10 days before the torrent appeared on 4chan, and later in March, the weights appeared on Hugging Face, so basically anybody can use them. I was able to legally use, uh, get to them through the university, but otherwise, like, the people were experimenting on them a lot. And just two days ago, like, new version of the Llama appeared, 
and it's now a very open license. It's not totally open, it's not MIT or Apache, but it's, it's pretty open. And why do I care about Llama? Why don't I use like many of like the other models that are available? Yeah, I like Llama, so I like to put, <laughs> but Falcon is also like nice bird. Uh, the real reason is that if you only take care, uh, care about English, it's fine. You have like now retrained llama, you have the open llama, because I'm using the small llama, just seven billion parameters, so I would be fine. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is that uh, for Czech, it depends like how much Czech text was in the training corpus, and only llama is having a like reasonably Everything else was much worse than Lama. So I was still hoping that, that Meta will open source it and it finally happened, so I'm now happy. Another take home message, hugging face, both libraries and the, the hub is, is awesome. It's uh, something that used to be complicated, is now a piece of cake, anybody can do that. So this is the list of the open models you can use. Uh, this, they even like uh, run them on some benchmarks, so there is the leaderboard, this is the old one because Falcon is still winning, that's not true anymore. And you might ask like how am I doing that? Wasn't like running large language models basically only uh, available for the Google, Meta and companies like that? And the thing is thanks to the hugging face it's not anymore or more like implementation of other techniques into the hugging face ecosystem. So even to load the model into like consumer size GPU card used to be impossible. Now it's, uh, now it's possible because instead of using 32 bytes for the number, we are now using only eight or four. There's some trick how to do that. Uh, also, you know, if, if you're using the uh, uh, neural networks like that, it's hard to train them because we have the billions of the model. So the trick is we usually don't train the whole model. We use like very small fraction of the parameters and train on them. The trick is called LoRa. There is a nice hugging face block like how this is used. So currently another take home message is that the training is easy. You collect your training set. You, there is the script you can get from the hugging face. You train it on your language, on your data. The hard part is running in, in the production. And that's like the sad end of my story. We still don't have our own model in the production because basically it doesn't make sense. Like we can run it a bit cheaper than, than the ChatGPT, but it would mean like taking care about all the infrastructure and having have some dedicated person for that. So uh, make sure, uh, like, like thinking about production and running your model in production from the very beginning. Okay, uh, there is some, uh, like now the issues. I don't know if you know this guy. This is Carl Bruman, the famous best statistician. And some people are now have like real negative emotion. Uh, there is AI act that made through the UR, EU Parliament. Uh, it could have like very negative consequences, not for the ChatGPT, but for the open models. So it's totally possible that running open models would be basically illegal in the European Union, and uh, or at least in the pro production environment. So yeah, I still don't know how this will end up, but it looks like pretty doomed. Uh, but among the 2023 for me is still the like year of miracles, like the new models, the new things like appearing every month, like the things that I would think that are impossible just a year ago. Okay, so this is our team at the Monitora. We are still hiring. If you are Prague based, like come and chat. And this is me, uh, hope to see some of you of the Czech PyCon that will be in September here in Prague. And if you have your own experience with running large language models in Czech or in other, any other language or running large language models in production, I would like, love to talk to you. Otherwise, thank you for the listening and I'm open for questions.
Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, so for anyone who has questions, please come to the microphone because sessions are recorded. So we want to have your voice on the uh, videos. Hi, thanks for the talk. Really, really interesting. Um, you've mentioned you've encountered issues with hallucinations. Uh, did you experiment with the temperature parameter in ChatGPT? Yes. So uh, we, li like the standard temperature is something like 0 0.7, if I remember correctly, and we are using lower. We are not using the zero. I have now my colleagues that is pushing for the zero, but I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, so yes, so this is something that we are using, but to be honest, after, that was with the first model, and after like switching to ChatGPT and like, uh, basically uh, tuning a bit like what uh, like uh, size of the text uh, we summarize. I think I have not really, I've seen one hallucination. That's a funny part. It was uh, the article about the Czech actor that was uh, supposed to give some, uh, like uh, moderate some effort. And the name of the actor was nowhere in the text itself. It was only on the like photo that was coming with the, with the text. So there was no way how to do the summarization. And the model knows, you know, there should be some check actor like in the, in the summary, so he hallucinated. And every time I rerun the hallucination, he came with different name, unfortunately never the right one. It sounds really plausible. That's, that was like all the real check actors, they could do the job. But yeah, so, so that was like more innocent, but it's working really good. And ChatGPT is usually, if you will like give him the information, give him the clear instruction, it will do the job. Mm -hmm. It's like more often that he doesn't have the information, then he hallucinates. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, I'm a freelance data scientist and I'm about to start a project which is very similar to what you have done um, and presented, so it's very exciting for me. And I will, wanted to ask you, um, if I understood you correctly, you tried the open AI, uh, open AI APIs, and also you fine-tuned some models from Hagen Phase. Correct. Beyond the, the question of the costs, what other insights did you get out of that? Because this is a design decision that I'm also thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, like some of the things that we take for granted because we're mostly playing with like the ChatGPT are not uh, so common for like uh, open models. So one of them, as I've said, like not every model understands Czech and Slovak. Some of them at all, basically. It's, it, they have been only trained on the English text. Mm -hmm. Other thing is that ChatGPT is instruction train model. Mm -hmm. And like many of those foundational models, now it's better, now, now everybody knows that they need to make the instruction version of the model. But at the beginning, I have told them like, summarize the article, then I put the text, and then instead of doing the summary, they just continue with the text, because mm -hmm. you know, that, that's another way how, you, how to like, uh, make the plausible continuation of what, what I did. Mm -hmm. So that was another thing. Yeah, and another, like, my, my experience is wait, a week or two with the, with the new model, like for the Lama, like my colleagues were pushing me like, we want that, that looks like really interesting. And I was like, oh, but this is running on eight GPU and we have only one and, uh, and it really happened. Like if you, if you, the community is awesome, like around that it's really unbelievable. Lama 2 is now here for two days. It's already on the uh, hugging phase, the people already trained the model based on the Lama 2. There's lots of the experience in two days. It's mm -hmm. like even too good to be true. So listen to the community. Listen they will you. help you a lot. Thank you. Hey, yeah, really good talk. Um, Thank you. I know that, well, I've heard rumors about GPT losing fidelity over time. Uh, since it first came out, they said there's been some degradation in performance. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you've noticed this and have you mitigated against it? So I have heard that about the uh, GPT-4. I'm not sure that the same is true about the GPT-3.5, and, and I didn't see it. Okay. 
Okay, we no longer have time for questions, but I hope, Peter, you will be around for the rest of sure. the conference. Uh, thank you again for the great talk. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you for having me.